Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to talk about some of the most asked questions about Yixin teapot. Be sure to check out this video if you're looking for some useful and practical tips when it comes to choosing an Yixin teapot. If this is your first time stumble across our video, hello, I'm Jen from Jen Tea. We specialize in fine tasting grade Chinese tea. Please consider subscribing if you're also a tea lover and would love to see more videos regarding Chinese tea and uh, tea culture. The most popular questions I've received is what's the difference between Yixin Zisha, uh, Jian Shui Zitao, and uh, Chao Shan Zhu Ni. Before we dive into the details, first uh, let's look at the names. What does all these names mean? Well, the good thing is they are structured in the same way. The first two characters refers to the origin, Yixin in Jiangsu province, uh, Jian Shui in Yunnan province, and Chao Shan in Guangdong province. Now you know where these clays all come from. The misleading part is the color part, which is the third character, where Yixin is a purple, purple, and uh, Jian Shui is also purple, while Chao Shan is red. However, that doesn't mean anything about their clay. All the teapots or all the uh, tea vessels from these regions could be in various colors, so don't get misled by these colors. The last character in the name actually reveals the fundamental difference between these three. Uh, to be more specific, the fundamental difference between Yixin Zisha vis-a-vis the other two uh, clay pots. Even though in uh, English translation we all call that a clay, uh, but in Chinese Yixin is Zisha, while um, both Jian Shui and Chao Shan are Tao and Ni. So the fundamental difference between them is actually the material. Yixin clay is actually a kind of ore while the Jian uh, Shui Zitao and uh, Chao Shan Zhu Ni, they're more of uh, a mud, a clay kind of texture. So meaning they have a different, quite a different composition in material in terms of granite uh, as well as mineral. So this kind of a material difference results in the different process. For example, if it's uh, Yixin Zisha, you cannot uh, excavate, ex, ex, excavate, excavate. Excavate. Yixin Zisha clay, once it's excavated, it cannot be used right away. It always goes through a phase of a uh, airing uh, or say um, aging uh, old times they take like even years now everything is speed up it could be months but still needs some time then when it comes to uh, the shaping process Yixin Zisha traditionally use the pad or um, hammering uh, motion to form the body of the teapot while well, Jian Shui Zitao and uh, Chao Shan Zhu Ni are more typical, uh, the spinning wheel, the, uh, like, uh, like the seam in the ghost, that's how you form the uh, vessels. Also, the material decides the firing temperature as well as the shrinkage rate. Because of all these differences, the teapots also have a different breathability and heat retention ability. Uh, Yixin Zisha features that unique uh, double porous structure or dual porous structure. So if you have uh, the same tea, the brewed tea leaves in Gaiwan or uh, Yixin Zisha teapot, you will notice the ones in the Gaiwan gets moldy way faster than those in the teapot. The second difference is uh, something that we often overlook. It is the cultural and the history. Yixin is where this kind of clay teapot is invented. The technology of making that a small size, 
uh, the various aspects that uh, at that time was innovative. It all happened in the late Ming Dynasty, uh, while uh, talking about uh, Jian Shui Zi Tao and uh, uh, Chao Shan Zhu Ni in terms of them making the uh, teapot is quite recent. Many people wonder how to reset a teapot. That is a really good question. I think there are roughly three ways to do it. Well, the first one is the simplest way, which is boiling water. All you need to do is fill the teapot with boiling water and uh, give it outside rinse as well. Leave that for a couple of hours or even overnight and see maybe the order is removed already. If this way doesn't work, you can go to the second way, which is slightly more complicated. It's just repeat how we kaihu open the teapot. Uh, so I demonstrated that in the other video. I'll be sure to put the link down below and you can repeat that, uh, that step. Usually after you doing this boil steps, it will eliminate most of the order the, the teapot had. The last way to reset the teapot is literally the last way, the most not recommended, the most radical way, which is send the teapot back uh, to the kiln to be refired again. Um, most of the uh, teapot maker would also suggest against it because it has such a high breakage rate. At some point it's not worth it, but uh, every now and then people do it. So just want to give you an idea there is such a way, but I don't think any of us are interested in doing that to our precious teapot. I think the first two ways of reset a teapot should be sufficient. I hope this is helpful. If you have more questions about a teapot, be sure to leave the comment down below. I'll do my best to answer. If you like our content, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribe to our channel. Until next time, keep steeping.